Hello, this is Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Hi everyone.、Um, today I have my dear friend Nicholas Tex here with me. In this episode, I actually had Nicholas in mind for weeks to join me in the podcast, and、uh, then I started to hear other people asking me, "Don't you? Aren't you going to invite Nicholas? Aren't you going to invite Nicholas?" So I thought, "Wow, that's really one mind keep prompting me." To have Nicholas, so yeah, I actually met Nicholas in 2014 when he came to Living Miracles Monastery, and at that time, 2014, he was only 20 years old. He,、um, I believe, he finished two years of university and dropped out of university and came straight. From university to、uh, living M- miracles monastery to live a very devotional life. So he has been living in the community ever since.、Uh, though he did go out to travel throughout Europe for some months in between. So welcome, Nicholas. Thank you, Francis. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> yeah. It is、uh, a you know a great opportunity I think for us to to have this discussion and hopefully shed some light on what this devotional life looks like and feels like、uh, for both of us.、Mm. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it it is、um, you know you came to live in. A very monastic、uh, environment when you were twenty years old. <laughs>、um, how has it been for you? In that, I I'm interested in knowing, like, what, how, how is your life different in terms of goals and also in terms of、um, what what is That which that you experience on a daily basis.、Hmm. Good question. <laughs> well, I I feel like it's shifted、uh, over the years.、Um, in my experience,、um, because you know, coming to the community at that time, I I remember I felt when I heard about.、Uh, This community. I mean, I'd never heard of spiritual community before. I didn't even know that was a thing, or、mm-hmm. not that I'm aware of. <laughs> But I remember seeing,、um, hearing about it. There was something on. I think the site was acim.cc because、um, mm. I'd written to David, and then his signature. When he responded back, there was some websites he had linked, and I, I was curious because <laughs> I didn't know any of the websites or anything <laughs> at the time.、Uh, And I clicked on one of them, and I think it brought me to what was at the time the Canada、uh, Devotional Center website. And I was living in Canada at the time.、Uh-huh. And what they had on their page—I forget what it said. It's not there anymore, but、um, it said something like,、um, "Are you feeling this? Or are you are you、uh, like fed <laughs> up with the world? I don't know what it was, but it like." You know, it seemed like those infomercial things, but I was like, "Oh my God!" Like, yes, 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 yes. So something lit up, and then I saw I, you know, after that, when my mind was like opening up and seeing more of these YouTube videos and things, I saw、uh, a couple of, yeah, I think it was a couple of videos from the community about like, communal living.、Um, it was at the Nepsis Center in California. I think the ones I saw. And so, I mean, I didn't know anything about this community, but something about what I read there and what I've seen in the video was really drawing my heart.、Um, like I could, I could just feel it. And what was going on in my life at the time wasn't.、Um, and、um, and then, 
Yeah, actually, what led me to even write to David was um, I'd been practicing the course at that point um, for around six months. And I was really trying to go with like one workbook lesson a day. I was trying mm -hmm. to do it all in 365 days. <laughs> um, and when I, but when I reached out to him leading up to that, uh, I was experiencing for myself for like two or three weeks. Like, a, uh, I didn't know what the term was called at the time, but it was a dark night of the soul. Um, is what I learned afterwards. Oh, that's what that's called. Mm -hmm. uh, I just, yeah, I was in a very kind of deep, dark place in my mind and, and not knowing how to get out. And, and I think even that is the only thing that kind of got me to reach out to David. Like I wouldn't normally do that. I wouldn't reach out to like anyone. Um, but I just, I felt this trust with him. I'd already seen some videos and reached out. And so that, I feel like that was kind of this turning point and just seeing like, wow, like I was just in touch with so much fear at that time. And then, and then there were miracles, but in general, I was just feeling like <laughs> there was something about that moment where I felt like m my life as, and I didn't even have many ambitions, I would say, um, <laughs> I don't know. Like when I look back, it just feels kind of blank. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to do. Um, but I just, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just didn't want to be afraid. And that moment at that time just felt like um, whatever I thought my life might be was, was over. I felt like uh, I really related to that scene in the matrix with uh i think his name is cypher hmm. where he's like you know if i had known <laughs> like i would have never taken the red pill and that's because i was in that kind of dark night i was like oh my god what have i gotten myself into because i felt like i couldn't not be aware of what i was now aware of hmm. like my world kind of just felt over in a way and so i thought okay well now i don't know like you know what's you know what's next for me <laughs> mm. um so so yeah i that was kind of one of the main things bringing in but i had also in my mind thought well maybe i'll finish college first <laughs> and then come but um that didn't really sit right with me but i i didn't really have like another paradigm or thought like i just thought i had to finish it um Honestly, it felt more out of people pleasing that mm -hmm. I would have to finish it. But um, but yeah, talking with mighty companions and things, they basically just reflected what I was already thinking is, well, you seem to feel this, really feel this. You're curious about this. Why wait? <laughs> um, so I think when I started really hearing that, that was already at the end of I'd finished my second year um i was on summer break and i th really was feeling that so i i uh, yeah i spent the summer just kind of wrapping things up and and came towards here and so since so that was kind of this initial feeling where i i kind of felt like the spirit was like <laughs> kind of squeezing me into that position or like kind of you know nudging me um there and, and you know there were other things that led up to that moment but since then, um, I feel like it's, yeah, my experience has shifted. Um, uh, well, for one thing, when I came and I, when, when I took a look at that application form, <laughs> I was like, oh no, like reverence, all, you know, all these different things. I was like, <laughs> I don't know anything about any of these things. <laughs> like, I, you know, uh, I I've never done like silent retreats or anything. I've never spent any time. I was afraid of that. I remember my sister did like a, t a tend a Vipassana. Mm -hmm. I remember when she shared that with me, I was partly terrified <laughs> of mm -hmm. the thought of that. Um, but uh, so there was all these things and like, Oh, what skills do you have? And I, I was like, Oh God, like, I, I feel like I don't have any <laughs> skills. Um, so what I remember writing not that I was actually like skilled in those, but I just thought, well, all right, I, 
I think I wrote something about maintenance because I had never, um, I had worked a paid internship as like maintenance at a place, but yeah, I, I didn't really do maintenance there. <laughs> Um, or at least not in the way like actually fixing things. Um, it's more like cleaning up, but um, so I had that and cooking and cleaning. I just thought, well, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can at least do these things. I, I don't feel like I actually have any skills, you know, like there were things about computer, all this stuff. I, I don't know how to do any of this. <laughs> um, so I remember it, it took me twice to fill that out at the time um the first time I was just like oh god and then the second I had faced some of those fears and so then I I, I just kind of filled it all out so I had that at the time and so I just yeah I just wanted to like experience this community because I felt drawn to it and I wanted to see like what mm -hmm. it's about am I you know can I actually do this and I thought well I'd kind of give it my best shot <laughs> at a devotional stay and it was just like so miraculous for me um, because I leading up to it, I could feel that, but I, I really felt it when I came that sense of safety. Like I felt like, Oh, here's a place where I can really kind of let myself fall apart and no one's going to try to fix me. Like no one's going to, mm -hmm. you know, kind of that feeling of like, Oh, what's wrong? You know, like mm -hmm. <laughs> where I could just really allow like the space, you know, the space would be held for me to just, fall apart and I, and I felt that and you know leading up to it and so my first month was just especially I'd say my first month was like a real emptying out mm. <laughs> of emotions like every day um and that built like this confidence for me and like wow I mean I don't know where this is leading but I I like this <laughs> you know I felt really good about that um and and so I, I felt more, um, in some sense, I felt, a, I don't know if this is the best term, but I felt a bit more kind of wild when I came, like an untamed horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just what comes to my mind when I think back. But, um, and so I feel like over the years, what has, has kind of shifted has been, um, well, I, I feel like a deepening in maturity. Um, mm -hmm um and it feel, has felt very gradual still going <laughs> um and you know le learning uh there were some big points where I felt like I had some kind of big advances with that in, in my experience but just kind of learning to be with my emotions like kind of hold my own space so to speak mm. or you know basically just trusting in the spirit even when people weren't necessarily around me mm -hmm um and i'd say just kind of many of the traits that were in that uh devotional stay application like deepening in reverence um actually i don't know if this one was in there but basically deepening in integrity um mm. so i feel yeah in some ways it's a lot uh, it's a lot more kind of yeah it's I, f I feel like it it's become kind of increasingly focused um in my experience and with just you know the projects I've I've gotten into over the years just how that's kind of opened up and expanded uh, in this community mm -hmm. you know what I support with um it's it's just gone in that yeah direction like a funnel like <laughs> I like I like how you described it a deepening maturity i really like that and i think also um you know i i know that you right now at least for the past year you uh joined this web team a two men web team you and jp <laughs> that is uh, behind ma maintaining and um, managing all our websites or most of it at least on 60 plus websites and um, you you didn't have any computer skills when you when you came or before I would say before you even took this area 
you didn't really. And so it's like um, you, you got this area, you said yes, and and then what happened, what I observe, you know, and hear a lot about the decisions that you guys were making on a daily basis. And there were many, many decisions. If anything, this area never um, is in shortage of decisions to make. <laughs> what I heard from JP to describe this area was that he told me one day, he said, you know, because he has been doing this area for at least six or seven, eight years. And he said, he and you, like he said, we really do not know what we're doing. Um, we're totally counting on the miracles. We're totally counting on things flowing. And if things don't flow, we don't really have any tools or skills um, that we have developed to solve a problem. So basically we're doing this area and completely and utterly dependent um, on the miracles. <laughs> and I really like the way he described it. And I thought, yeah, that is a very, um, that is what the training is all about. You know, A Course in Miracles is a pathway of mind training. What is the training for, except for us to start to get direct in, in touch with the spirit and to step back and let spirit lead the way. And how can we truly do that if we don't give real decisions for him to show us? Because decisions ultimately are judgments. We're, we're making decisions by um, basically judging how the situation is and what is the best course of actions. And to give our judgments and the way that we perceive everything and to have that being completely purified by spirit from a forgiven perspective, the practical application does involve giving those real decisions to, to the spirit to make. And I just know how many times I have heard from JP that you have gone into this just over a very short period of time, like a year, a little over a year, all this um, spirit given prom that comes through you all the time, um, one after the next. And they, and he just come back to that, Nicholas thought of this. Of course, it's very, very miraculous. So it's like you truly opened your mind up to receive the spirit's thoughts um, through this area. Does that feel true to you? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> um, I, 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 th I think so. I mean, what comes to my mind is that, um, yeah, I've been kind of reflecting on this area, and actually, I love the way JP kind of described all that. Um, but I, I was realizing that, I mean, I feel like there's at least a prayer, and then I have kind of judgments about myself. So that was aside. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like there has been this prayer to, uh, yeah, as best I can, fully embrace the area. And, and I was just, yeah, that's been kind of the thought that's been coming back to me. It's like, yeah, how, you know, how can I, how else can I receive thoughts or prompts if, if it's not embraced, um, if there's not like a, a surrender into it, um, like, you know, diving into the water, you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> how do you know how warm or cold it is until you actually are mm -hmm. in it, you know, um, so, 
so yeah, I, I feel like that has been an important thing for me. And I, I feel, uh, and I, I feel like, um, yeah, JP has been like a demonstration for me, uh, especially with this area of just kind of giving all to all, like just really embracing. And so I feel like that has really helped me having kind of this symbol up front of me of kind of um, like a brother that's walked before me. And, um, and yeah, um, kind of following that as best I can and diving into it. Um, cause yeah, I, I because I, I have noticed for myself when I don't feel like I'm in that embrace or like there's a sense of resistance. So it's actually, I feel like it is kind of like a day to day thing for me or even like a moment to moment or, uh, yeah, I mean, that's even closer, but like uh, per project, yeah, per moment, feeling of like, am I embracing this or am I resisting it? Because mm -hmm. when I'm resisting it, I, I don't get prompts. <laughs> mm. uh, or I don't, you know, it's, or basically it's like, I don't know, it feels more like when I'm aware of that, it's more about kind of confronting that resistance and then when I'm through that then somehow there's like there is this feeling of more like an effortless flow or something just feels easier and, and then like some thoughts come to me oh wait maybe this or that but mm -hmm. when I'm not in that experience it's almost like I, I start to feel like a headache or something like I can feel almost like in my head like like blocks or something like um I like I can't receive um hmm. So th that's been like the experience. And I don't always know really if they're good ideas sometimes <laughs> or like, you know, if they're from the spirit, but uh, that's what I've enjoyed about these, you know, these calls with uh, JP that I have very regularly about with our area of just um, it's every time a practice for me to uh, just, I f yeah, I feel like actually so much of what I've been noticing, like the practice in this area, and I think our community or just everything is, is yeah it feels like a practice being open just mm. like staying open being open like just with everything i do to to see if maybe another thought comes to me while i'm working on something a feeling or is this flowing um just it's like this constant practice which i've heard uh described that prayer is just a sense of openness mm. of being open so that's where i feel like this area or, or all projects is like this constant prayer mm -hmm. uh, um so yeah just as um yeah this being open and seeing um what comes from there and and sharing with jp these thoughts um so i think before i share them i do try to like get a sense of like basically how does this feel um and <laughs> i'm not always you know i'm not always sure but there is like a sense of like, you know, whether it's spirit or not or helpful or not, like, you know, do, does it feel, I don't know, maybe inspiring? Does it feel kind of good? I don't really know what the words are to describe that experience, but like this, and then, and then I share and then, you know, I kind of just, you know, see where it goes from there. Maybe it's not felt, but then later I felt, yeah, there was one of these situations where I, I thought it was kind of like this, <laughs> fun but kind of ridiculous idea um, and I told J I told JP about it and my perception of it in the moment was like okay like oh that's interesting but it was I perceived like no it's not a good idea um, <laughs> and then how I heard about it later was like actually oh it's a miraculous idea like oh like, it was like really felt so like oh great you know I just kind of said it because I yeah. I don't know I was feeling it it kept coming to my mind yeah it felt kind of fun so I said it so I like it I think if I if I remember it correctly I don't fully know the details of your area but I, I hear a lot of the miracles um one of them maybe is exactly what you're talking about it was when you guys gonna migrate all the sites from <laughs> one server to the next server uh, you lose some kind of security protection. And there are certain websites, um, they're just HTML code website. So they, they're 
they're not really um, under any security plugin protections and they will be easily um, open a room for hacked and, and everything. So you guys were praying about in on this new server, how are these sites going to work when they are so, um, they're not really having any security. And then you came up with this really out of the box idea. You said, well, what about we build, we build them under a, world, a WordPress um, umbrella, not build a WordPress site, but under WordPress like a holder and then have the WordPress security plugin put in. It was like, a, at the time, JP was telling me and saying, this is something like, we don't know, we have never thought of, we don't know whether it's going to work, but it turned out to be such an amazing idea. <laughs> and and when you guys were like, okay, let's try to move and see whether this is just outrageous or it's actually practical, it turned out to be actually doable. That's interesting to hear from your perspective that it, it was something just fun that came to your mind. Yeah, I, I'm thinking back and um, I don't know, there's something like when I joined this web area, uh, you know, I mean, there's been many phases, it's been kind of gradual and then at one point it's very exponential, but, um, but I remember when I was starting to work with our WordPress sites, there was this one plugin that just seemed daunting. <laughs> Like it was very technical and all this stuff and I would hear about it, but, you know, it was like more with JP and, um, or, you know, the web team was really working on. So I was like, eh, okay. Um, and that was the security plugin. But since then I've just grown to like, really love it. Like it's, it's just, a, I don't know, like I, get, I have like a big grin on my face, like just thinking about it. It just feels like <laughs> a really good plugin. It makes sense. Mm. It just, um, I just, I like it. <clears throat> So I don't know, like, I feel like I'm in love with the play. like my heart is just <laughs> open. With it. Um, so I don't know. So it's in my mind. So I already have like this attraction towards this plugin. And I have thought at different times, like, because we had the other great thing about it was it was a one-time purchase. Uh, it was good cost. It feels like we have a nice relationship with the, the developer. Um, so there's just all these things that feel good about it. And so um, I just... Yeah, I don't know. Somehow in my mind, when it comes to security, I just think of like, that. that's such a good, I wish I could incorporate that in other areas. It's like this thought. And um, so, so I, yeah, uh, I just remember it was on the call. I didn't have this thought, I don't think before the call, but he was just talking about this. And then I just started to have the thought of like, wait, it's all, you know, just code and WordPress. Can't we just like, Put those two together <laughs> i don't know like i love i like this it, you know it just felt like this fun thing and you know just attraction towards the plug so. that's so interesting because i i do i actually resonate with something that when it comes from love that's where miracle is you know i also recently read a quote and saying don't do things for love but do things because of love you know, not do anything be, to to get love or approval, but do it because there is a there is something fill up your heart from within, and then to share that. And I I recognize that because you do have a big screen on your face right now. <laughs> You're you are you know this is interesting because your area could be described you know, from an outsider, most tedious. And um, um, it's all coding. It's actually coding for two people who actually also don't know anything about coding. So it's not like you guys are in your own world, building it behind the scenes and know exactly what you're doing. But how, and, and yet at the same time, because of the commitment and also because the purpose of it, because of the purpose of it, I know what you guys were experiencing every day is not coding and is not a product and is not problems, but instead is like a, a prayer 
together with a Mati companion and watch how the spirit comes through each and both of you and behold how miracles would solve everything. Mm. It really solves this, you know, the, the problem in the mind to, to think there is a problem outside to be solved. And yet it does reflect in, in actual um, perceptions as well. So this is truly the purpose of the area. And, th and this purpose is our choice, you know, how we give this area either to be used for some kind of end goal that's other than miracles and other than this direct relationship with the spirit or purely just for a direct relationship with the spirit, which I think is what you, you are experiencing. And this is what I call uh, probably a uh, deepening, the deepening of a relationship, because I know you have firsthand experience now that spirit does come to you Spirit does use your thoughts or how spirit does give you his thoughts. That's more accurate. Mm. And you know how it feels when it comes through. And you, you use your body and your mind and your time to carry that thought and to share that thought. And you know how that feels. It's a very different purpose because I know before you came to the community, you spent two years in university, but I know before that most of most part of your life was given to play basketball. And that was in and of itself a very rigorous uh, training, you know, any sports, any, anything, any skills in this world, it all requires some kind of training. And here we are also in a mind training program, but this mind training program is not designed by uh, anybody. Mm. We're all in this mind training program together, seemingly have very different or individualized mind training curriculum. But what I think different is different is the purpose that that you're holding and what you want to come off it. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting because I I do remember actually with basketball, I I felt like as best I could, I you know I tried to um, kind of fully give into it, especially my my later years of, of high school. I, you know, every day and workouts and everything. Um, just kind of just being with that discipline. But I, I do remember that the thing was, uh, or at least one of the things was, yeah, I don't know the exact words, but there was, a, I guess I, I felt like I wasn't sure why I was doing it other than actually although I didn't have those concepts or thoughts at the time, but for a self-concept, I wanted to kind of be seen or liked. Um, I didn't want to be seen as a quitter, but if I really looked at it, I wasn't, I, you know, just comparing how, you know, how I feel now, it's like, I wasn't inspired. And I think that's, yeah, I think that was why it was just inevitable for it to kind of all fall apart on me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then I just, I do remember being in college and having this significant moment right around that time I reached out to David um, and like the dark night, just uh, because I then, you know, I stopped playing basketball right after high school. I just, I, I just felt done, kind of burned out with it. Um, but I was still interested in kind of physical activity. And so I was, I was in a discipline of uh, uh, weightlifting. Um you know just and trying to be quite disciplined with it um and I just remember one time it was, this was in my second year of, of college and 
and uh, I was yeah doing some weightlifting, and I was in the middle of of a, a set of like in, in the middle of it, and I just I could kind of feel leading up to this, but I just felt like I can't do this anymore. So I finished it and walked out, never walked back in. <laughs> I just finished that one thing and then walk. I just I couldn't do it anymore. And the thought was because I've been practicing the course at that time uh, was basically, do you want freedom of the body or freedom of the mind for both you cannot have? And I was just seeing like, wait, I'm doing all this because, <laughs> uh, well, I want to be attractive. You know, I want to look good. You know, it was like, mm -hmm. I was just looking at it and I was like, well, why do I want to have that? Well, so that, you know, well, women will be attracted to me. And so I can have a relationship. Well, why do I, because I want, to have love you know I want to experience love like I want my heart to be open and then so I was like looking at all this effort <laughs> I was doing it that way kind of going about it indirectly and then seeing uh like just with the course and those workbook lessons and just feeling like I feel like I that feels more direct <laughs> <laughs> and I was already having some experiences and miracles with the course so so I, I felt that and so here it's just been that direction of, you know, freedom of the mind. Mm. Um, it's been a kind of continuation of that. And somehow this whole thing has just felt, I don't know. I, I think part of it at the beginning, it felt so new or foreign. Like I, I didn't really grow up with, not that I was aware of, of like religious or even spiritual conditioning. So my mind was just kind of available in a way. And um, so when I started to, kind of come into this of myself in one sense um yeah there was like this peak of like well I've never like encountered this like I didn't even know prayer was really a thing I, I kind of thought it was like a joke yeah I don't know <laughs> like I, I thought people must be lying or so. I don't know like I had no experience of it I was like they must just I don't know it's like made up or whatever mm -hmm. um yeah I was I consider myself more atheist when I was in high school but um but yeah so just when I started to have these experiences like of myself just like you know through mind training or workbook lessons or just uh, you know, other things that felt really attractive to me and mm -hmm. um so that that kind of expansion so yeah coming here um that's that's been like this this direction of of like well yeah following kind of that draw of like of that experience because I was like wow this is so new and I, I want that experience like when I heard about I, I found about the course through Disappearance of the Universe and and it was in that book just the way it was described just like you know enlightenment I'd never you know these weren't ideas I like grew up with but mm -hmm. just that feeling of like so much love so much, just like openness all that I, I thought yeah I, I want that mm -hmm. and so I felt like I really dove into those workbook lessons that first year as best I could with what I was aware of and and so I don't know it's just I felt like I feel like it's been a continuation of kind of following mm -hmm. that feeling and I felt this community in one sense kind of had what I wanted um I'd heard a term like leading up to that time of like uh, it was more a business term, but it was like, follow those who have what you want, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it was more like monetary success at that time, but, <laughs> but, uh, but I felt like there was a translation for me, like, you know, mm -hmm. wow, like David's so happy or this community's practicing guidance. And that felt like, what is this mysterious kind of, it, it all seemed like this superpower type thing. And I, you know, <laughs> grown up with like, marvel movies and all these things and it felt like I, I want a superpower like i want to experience that is that possible for me to experience this like super i don't know so that, that was part of it i felt like 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 i wanted to kind of test it out uh -huh. i remember even telling my dad in a car ride this was a summer you know before i came to community so like a year before but i was reading distance universe and all that stuff and uh, and I was telling him, yeah, I, like the goal for this life or what I want to do is become enlightened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, you know, these aren't things my dad and I ever talked about. So 
I think I don't really remember what his reaction was. Maybe it was like, oh, all right, nice. Or, but then, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, so, so yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe there's something else to say. Um. and there is i know that just to you know the experience the, the miracle is not the course described miracles as effect as nothing to you know to to be amazed about even, so to speak, because miracles is natural to the course. Jesus says miracles is natural. And when it doesn't occur, something has gone wrong. So basically he's, he's saying, you know, if we get in touch with the thoughts of the spirit, we really allow the spirit to saturate our mind to direct our bodies, um, direct our time, direct our days, what would show up in perception would be nothing short of miracles. This should be what we expect and this should be the only thing we are entitled to. As a matter of fact, we're not entitled to anything else. We can't even say we're entitled to respect, to um, you know, to be treated nicely to justice in this world, but we are entitled to miracles. And that is because the spirit thoughts are in our mind and to not get in touch with it is, is basically unnecessary. Why not? You know, if we know this is possible within our reach. And yet having said that, it is also a journey of mind training. It is also a journey of facing a lot of the doubt thoughts and a lot of the temptations from the, the judgments and the egos as in the mind. Um, so to, I, I see that miracles as natural, but it's also kind of like a, a signpost. Okay. This is, a reflection of you're going the right direction in mind. And this, this is what you're entitled to all the time, then keep going, you know, mm. but what do you, do you want to share some of the challenges you have being um, very committed and focused and yet what are the kind of challenges? Mm. Well, I, I would say that um, well, I'd say the first one that comes to mind is um, let's say distractions. Like there's a sense of um, distraction being yeah, one of them um, where yeah, there's something uh, I guess I've I've noticed where it just maybe it's because of all like the <laughs> the focus or kind of the purpose that's held that sometimes it kind of feels I don't know like in some ways <laughs> the unconscious mind is like a like a ketchup bottle or something and <laughs> just kind of squeezes out um, what needs to be seen and looked at. So I, I kind of feel like with all the focus, it's kind of doing that squeezing on me and. Um, yeah, I would just notice, um, well, specifically, like, there, I would just be finding myself, like, on Facebook at times, or YouTube, or things like that, and, and this kind of harmless feeling of, like, well, you know, just, I'll just kind of check out some things, or, or I'll watch a video, or I just had a thought, or actually a big one that's been, for me, it's, like this sneaky thing that seems to get past my attention of feeling curious about something like something will come to my mind and I feel 
curious about it, so to speak. Um, and they're usually not like, it's, it's not like, oh, what did Jesus say about this? It's more like some kind of random curiosity of, of even like maybe a movie or a character or basically some fiction or someone, I, you know, it just, it doesn't matter what, but one of these things will come up for me. And I just feel like this compulsion to look it up. The next thing I know, it's like, you know, 20, 30 minutes. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like it just kind of slips by. Um, or sometimes I'm aware of it. And I'm like, oh, but this feels kind of fun or something. But, but when I look at how I feel afterwards, something doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't feel like it. Um, like when I look back at it, it was more maybe even being unaware of it, like trying to reduce maybe some sort of pressure I'm feeling. Um, like a, like a coping mechanism and and yet um even as simple as it is i forget that um or i can be maybe resistant to it but just remembering that actually just being with it kind of being with whatever the pressure is or discomfort or something actually is kind of the way through and you know i feel better because when i fall into some of those things i, I even kind of start, feel it like in my body like i feel a bit nauseous or maybe even sometimes a headache um or yeah something just doesn't feel right um and then well i don't know. yeah there's a sense of guilt uh kind of all these things kind of come in in my awareness um so so with those it's it's more just kind of at least at some point eventually catching myself and just okay like let's try to start over here you know what am i doing what is this for what you know what would be most helpful right now and just kind of basically getting back into alignment um one of the other ones which I've, I felt kind of embarrassment about, <laughs> uh, and, and shame, um, yeah, was, uh, so I guess it's been a thought that's come, come to me at different times during the years, but it seemed like something that just kind of felt a lot stronger somehow the kind of draw to it or attraction to it this past year um i i mean i felt like it came at different at other times but it somehow at least right now it seems like it wasn't as strong as it was lately uh but it was um to play a uh, an online video game um called world of warcraft <laughs> and uh <laughs> even saying the name is so healing for me because it's it, yeah it's it's uh part of the reason for it um is just or kind of the shame is just is something that i played at a at a young age like beginning of my middle school years up to the beginning of high school um and it was something i basically hid from everyone except my best friend at the time uh and the only reason he knew is because he played as well <laughs> that's how we kind of like came together it was like like this mutual thing that was at least one of the reasons um and then um and then yeah i basically quit cold turkey um but i was i can definitely you know attest that i was like addicted to it i felt like i didn't want anything else um nothing else was like good in my life so so there was that um so that was one of the things that in some ways surprised me uh, that this would come up because it felt, yeah, I don't know. It, it just felt something kind of out of left field for me. Um, and, and yet, you know, the specific was really, it's, it's been very kind of sticky. Like, it's like, no, it's this particular thing I want. And, and uh but you know when i look at maybe some of the things that have kind of brought it up just um well i think just in general just the kind of the direction of everything kind of that 
focusing and narrowing of the mind um Mm -hmm. just like the focus increase the deepening um but you know the thoughts kind of surrounding it unworthiness feelings like uh yeah like inadequacy feeling like i i don't have what it takes to do this journey um i don't have like the level of focus or commitment or even desire Mm. um yeah but um, uh, other surrounding traits (laughs) um yeah i don't feel willing um uh you know there's a sense of sacrifice you know just all these things would kind of surround it um and and it felt like yeah something i could escape too um Mm -hmm. that is like within reach in a way (laughs) Mm -hmm. because i have similar patterns with you know relationship desires and um even things with like basketball but actually that one feels less strong but it's more like a fleeting thought uh but because this one seemed kind of more just, I don't know, somehow it would be easier to get. (laughs) Mm. Uh, It's, I think part of that has been, maybe why it's been so sticky. So, Mm. um, but yeah, so those are some things. I mean, I'd say I also, I mean, maybe the deeper things I I notice just difficulty. um, I mean, when you're living in community, at least that's been my experience, it's, it's kind of like this pressure cooker because of the uh the uh, purpose held and just kind of the focus and i feel like in my experience like the community over the years has become kind of as narrowed like it's become more focused more and more and and in one sense uh that has felt like really good to me and in another sense you know that that of course flushes up the healing so it's felt very uncomfortable um and so just even that the dynamics with the ones i live with in this house um even though actually a lot of times i spend uh just kind of focused uh working on my projects in my room um yeah there's just even kind of the dynamics there and um that's uh, i'd say yeah they just kind of flush up everything Mm -hmm. uh the area um Mm -hmm. just because it requires so much you know integrity and focus and prayer and it's like i can just see what happens as one of these difficulties of like like there's a part of my mind that is like resistance to that or doesn't want it it kind of feels like um (laughs) lucy although i wouldn't say my i don't feel like i'm at that percentage but she talks like when she's at these very high percentages of mind that uh she needs to take more of like that blue crystal because there's parts, I think she says, like cells that will resist till the end mm-hmm. um, that are just like, no. And that I, I do feel like that, like I can notice that in my mind where there's just parts of my mind that will like re- resist the means, you know, until the end. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and yet um, I don't feel like there's really a way around it other than like through it um and i mean i also don't feel like i've been the best one at these things in my perception but i uh yeah i feel like a lot of it for me is just is uh is just um just being with it but um Yeah, which actually, I do wonder actually, how, actually how how you, um, yeah, how, I mean, when I think of like you or JP or some of the other ones, at least because of my experience, I, I, I it's like I wonder have they have they gone through this or were their minds just so kind of ready and willing that, um. I don't know. Maybe it hasn't been difficult. <laughs> uh, like it hasn't, I don't know. Um, I guess. Yeah. So th- that has kind of brought up this question in my mind, like how, how have you kind of dealt with those times or like, 
have you ever felt um because in those moments I, maybe i didn't say it but one of the things that would come up with me is just a sense of like hopelessness like well i don't feel all this so like i feel like a lost cause in one sense so mm-hmm. i guess mm-hmm. have you ever felt that and, and if so like yeah what what have you done or like how, yeah how do you move through mm-hmm. that to be like like actually out of it and not yeah. fall back <laughs> yeah yeah well Definitely. I mean, I I wouldn't say this journey is um, is easy, but it is very different. It is not really what we thought, and it really does not take a lot of effort, as I thought originally. But it is a journey that that you really have to allow the inner darkness to rise up and truly nobody really liked to face those darkness. Um, you know, as the course, even Jesus described that, you know, underneath sitting on top of the darkness is a face of innocence. It's really, I, I, I want to be a nice person. You know, I want to be liked and there may be some kind of standard I even hold on to myself, but that is a mask because underneath it, we're sitting on a my like a, a pile of self hatred that nobody really want to allow to come up. So I feel yes, absolutely, it, it comes. The darkness, the self hatred, comes up throughout um, many, 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 many times in many, many, many ways <laughs> um, in all kinds of dark thoughts, but. One thing I never really was doubting was the direction of this path because um, regardless of how dark the darkness was, somewhere in me, I always knew that the darkness was always sitting there. It was never really new. It was never caused by this particular situation. And it was never caused by this particular person or this particular uh, event. So I can never truly um, convince myself that by changing the situation, I would be better. I could never really feel true of that. If anything, what I feel more true was it feels good. It feels good. I could let myself really see, um, really allow the emotion to come up and truly not trying to hold it together and then see what happens. So it's more like a relax into it. And, and another thing I really learned was that when I was in darkness, I would really not try to make any conclusions or make any decisions because I noticed that it's one um, one kind of ego trick um, which was to conclude something and to make a decision basically any kind of conclusion saying None of it is inspiring because I'm, I'm not inspiring right. Now. I'm not inspired by this right now. So nothing else is inspiring. Or this blanket statement about I've never experienced any miracles. This is very typical. The ego wants to throw a very big plan- blanket um, statement to wipe out all the miracles, and also wants to make statement about myself. If this is who you are, you're this, this, you're not good at this. You are a joke. <laughs> you know, you can imagine it. And then another way it wants to do is to make decisions. I need to stop doing it from this moment on. That's a very typical decision. Make a plan for the future. Uh, because I, I, you know, it felt really true. It felt so relevant as at the in the moment. But gradually, over the year, I started to notice 
I only think of those thoughts when I was really unhappy. So that makes those thoughts quite irrelevant to me. If that if if I want to get out of this darkness, then I better not follow the conclusions I made, the decisions I I want to make in those moments. So, so I think what happens was a lot of the contrast experience after um, you know the spirit gave me some kind of prompts or people, and I truly get out of it. I would really take a moment to to think, wow. I don't feel any of the things I felt a moment ago anymore, and I don't believe any of the thoughts I believed a moment ago anymore. I don't believe how I see myself. I don't. I don't believe how I see other people anymore. I don't believe the conclusions or the decisions I made anymore. And when I notice it enough, I started to see, you know, those thoughts as not my thoughts anymore. It, it really happened gradually. Like you started to identify with, with something else. You don't identify with those thoughts anymore. But it, it does feel like, um, you know, it takes a little bit of stepping back to really see what is rising up and also allowing yourself to if you if you feel you have absolutely no power over them then not trying to hold it together to kind of do some kind of behavior mod- modification that's you know in a way that's what i i feel like really trust and be patient with it we can't really concern or worry about the step that we're not really ready to make but we are ready to make the step that is given to us in this moment and that's that's all we need to focus on truly Yeah, I guess I'm wondering, because something I've noticed with myself, like, is, you know, in some ways, I thought I would notice, like, oh, I thought, you know, I've been here this many years, and I, at least felt like as best I could, I was, you know, (laughs) using it, working it, um, uh, or yeah at least doing the best I could with it but um but I noticed that yeah I for myself it felt very disheartening noticing like um just you know the doubt thoughts I would just get uh so stuck for me or you know some of these feel and just like either not feeling the willingness or these things and but you know and this thought like oh has it all been for nothing you know mm-hmm. you know like a conclusion but um i i guess it does bring up this like have you yeah have you experienced that where i don't know how to say um i don't know where just something like even recently has like, you know, it's like after all these years and so, cause I see it as like, it's like, you know, I remember even Dang's, uh, David saying that, you know, it, you know, if they would add pictures in a, in a dictionary, like Francis's name would be right there with like willingness, or, uh, like devotion. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. So like, that's, you know, so that's what I see. Like, it's like this, like none of that happens, but um, I wonder, maybe maybe it was even in the past. Maybe it doesn't happen anymore. But has that has that been something where it's like it's going like maybe really good, or or I don't know. It's just yeah. I don't know how to really put down the question, but where if one of these things would just surprise you, um, like later on. 
and feel very strong like out of nowhere like wait what should be like beyond this mm -hmm. <laughs> essentially I mean, I, I did have those thoughts a lot at the beginning. I should be beyond this <laughs> way more than, than recently. I feel like nothing will surprise me anymore because um, <laughs> you actually become more and more humble and um, mm -hmm. feeling like, yeah, it's a lifelong journey and uh, more and more patient. And I think if if I, the thing is, you know, if I ever feel I have gone somewhere, I have achieved something, um, I can guarantee you at some point it will be shown to me that um, that wasn't true. You know, that's not true. Because that kind of thoughts to think I have gone somewhere is a thought that is that's denying um, the spirit because it gives this person um, a credit of some kind of personal effort. And it's not really um, the truth. You know, we, we have an identity that is shared. So anything about a separate identity is the total opposite of this realization. And a separate identity, when it is boasted, is way more dangerous <laughs> than uh, thinking that I'm nothing. I think Ultimately, it, it, this journey does bring me more and more close to this realization. So there is no personal pride or uh, credit that I can say, except to think, well, actually, you know, who am I fooling? It's actually not bad to know I'm nothing because then I can be true and sincere when I pray to the spirit to say, spirit, please guide me, because I really do not want to bring anything, anything from the past, anything I know to this moment. I'm truly in this place that have left with nothing but holy empty hands and holy empty mind and know that I'm very sincere to say, now you guide me and I'm willing to do absolutely anything absolutely anything you know when when i was uh doing speaking a lot i sometimes in at some some point this could be probably one of the things you're asking was because i've been doing public speaking for many years and then more and more i read uh in the course it felt like jesus was talking to me directly saying that let me use your words and i feel like haven't i already done that and yet he also says something that you know you are still feeling a sense of control and if you truly give everything to me you're afraid that i would embarrass you <laughs> the things come out of your mouth would be embarrassing and i thought well, I actually kind of in some way resonate with that, which is ridiculous. And yet that was um, true, you know. So it's also he was saying that words actually has no purpose ultimately for awakening. Um, and what you teach is not really what you say. It's the underlying attitude. You know, if you're really trusting, then you're teaching trust. Doesn't matter what the words are saying. If you are in preparation, in control, then you're teaching control. And that doesn't matter how beautiful your words sound. Mm. And that's really feel like, to me, every day is, a new beginning to learn how to 
yeah, just the trust so much and so totally um, and give, you know, absolutely everything, words, uh, thoughts to just let him direct so that we can be the student and we can learn what peace really is, what forgiveness really is. Mm. Like, um, yeah, I felt like I could hear that more when you were saying the, um, yeah, if you're controlling, then it doesn't matter how beautiful your words are, you're teaching control. And so I just felt like, huh, I guess maybe that is where you can feel the incentive to just to just show up and be willing. Yeah. Because then, you know, you're, you're teaching kind of the intuitiveness or spontaneousness or trust of, yeah. like, well, the spirit's got me. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, that's, that's ultimately what uh, we all have to and want to accept as our function. You know, we just want to be, be the carrier of this message. And this message is a message of trust. And the message is a message of not of myself, not of my will, but there is a will that is um, for the good of the whole. Mm. And I'm playing this part. I am giving my, my mind over to this so that however this message can, can shine through, you know, it can be, um, you know, you conveying an idea in your area and which light up your small team, but actually it reached me as well and light up the mind or it just through a smile, it, it's through just the grateful mind that we behold or through words um, or through just the daily seemingly very small task that we do with love inside of our heart and forgiveness as our purpose. That's really what this is about. And I do want to say that I, I do have that experience as well. When you get on with this journey for a while, um, at some point, all the past unforgiven thoughts would show up, mm-hmm. not for any reason to, um, to just haunt you, but <laughs> there is a purpose the spirit give to it. The spirit would say, now you, you have enough trust in me so that you know you're not facing those thoughts on your own. Those thoughts may represent some kind of identity that you're shameful of, who you are, or anything. But it really is never the action that you're feeling guilty or shameful of. It's always, you know, an identity behind it that is not true. But the spirit is just saying, you know, whenever those dark pockets rise up, and they will, but be not afraid because... Now you know I'm here with you and we watch, we look at it together with a new purpose. And everything when given a new purpose will be used for blessing. That's that's another thing I know how this journey really carried me through. It's truly not through willpower. It's truly not through effort. Um, it is through you know, spirit using the symbols, even preference, any kind of preference is is still a judgment. I like this, I don't like this, I have a particular attraction to this. And spirit really do not judge any of them. And when they rise up, you know, we can really invite the spirit to look at it and then give it a new purpose. Is this something you would use for healing, will you look at it with me? Um, that's that's what I really feel. This journey, you know, in a way, is deeply freeing because it frees 
emotions so quickly, and it also feels like really fun. Um, you truly can follow those ideas that is really fun and really sparkly and inspiring, and even the preference it will. Be used if we're given it to the spirit, not hide it and not give it to the ego. Like, oh, I just、mm-hmm. want to play it out. You know, even that is okay. But I, I would say that really, what what makes all the difference is the give the purpose that we give to it.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, well, thank you so much, Nicholas, for this beautiful, beautiful time together. Thank you for everything you share, and also thank you for everything、uh, you devote to. You thank you for the 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 devotion that you give to this forgiveness journey, and for all the questions that you ask me. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, Francis. <laughs> It just feels like a yeah. I just it's felt like a gift joining with you, and it just feels. Yeah, feels precious. Yeah. <laughs> mm, thank you, and also thank you everybody for joining Nicholas and I. I really hope to join you again next week. Bye. <laughs>